Yo yo, what is up guys and welcome back to a brand new league racing video. Today we are doing PSGL round 7 around Monza. And as you can see here in the standings, we are 19 points behind the leader, uh, Barry Bormand. And yeah, with three, three rounds to go, it's not going to be easy to catch up. Of course, point system is a little bit different. Nice, that's all. Um, as you can hear me say that I've driven five hours in a row. That's because of practice, of course, uh, ahead of this race. Because usually I don't practice ahead of PHL uh, apart from the day, uh, on the day. Um, simply because of the F1 eSports preparation. So today, um, done a lot of laps around Monza. We are, as you can see, 19 points behind the leader. A race win is 16 points. So with three rounds to go, we're still in the championship. It's just that we've got quite a big of a gap to uh, to catch up to so that's gonna make it very hard but I really like Monza one of my best tracks so uh, I think we can do it we're heading out for our first Q1 run here and as per usual we're just gonna try and make it into Q2 on a single set of tires so um, pretty hard to warm up your tires around here and you also cannot be too aggressive because the tire wear is very very high around here um, especially on this year's game the tire wear is pretty brutal so um, that makes the race very interesting as well um, makes for a lot of different strategies uh, between drivers and teams but now just trying to get that last little bit of temperature into our tires uh, before we start our first Q1 lap we've already gone out on the inters as per usual to try and uh, make sure uh, that everything is working but also just get a delta on the board we didn't do that this time around, we didn't set a lap, I just went out and in. Um, but on some tracks, I do like to set a lap on the inters. Um, just to have a delta there, you know? It can help a little bit. Um, but now, turn one. Important to break very late, but also very easy to mess up. And you can see there, took too much of that inside curb. Uh, as Brandon Lee goes P1 with a 118.758. And now into sector two we go. It's it is purple, um, but purple is a little bit flawed on this uh, on the F1 games, as you guys might know. It doesn't always mean you are the fastest in sector one uh, out of anyone. Um, as my sector one was just not that great because I had that inside sausage curb um, that messed it up a little bit for us. So the are open for the second time this lap as we head towards Ascari. Uh, Ascari, one of the easiest corners to invalidate, going to be sixth gear. And trying to carry the speed in without having to lift on the exit. That's so important through there. As there's a yellow flag up ahead for someone preparing his lap, I think so. Into the final corner. Breaking just after the 50 meter 6th gear to carry the minimum speed. You can choose 5th as well, but 6th just carries that little bit more speed. And up to the line we go to 118.933. Not a great lap, but... You can see there P4 uh, in between the McLarens. So we are up there. Um, and as you can see, we easily made it through into Q2 uh, ahead of Wilson Huge. Brendan Lee also only just did one lap. Um, so a lot of people are going to have uh, four new sets of tires remaining, which means two for Q2 and two for Q3. So that's going to make it uh, interesting, uh, to say the least. So we only use one set of tires. And... You can see there, we are currently P2 on a used set of tires. Uh, everyone went out on a new set of tires at the start of Q2. And now we've gone out, uh, just like everyone else, on a new set of tires. And now, um, again, I'm going to try and just do it on one set of tires. It's good practice to tr just do it in one lap. Uh, ahead of Q3, but also ahead of M1 Esports. It's important to get laps in. Um, in, in qualifying, just doing it on one set of tires. Into turn one. See if we can make up some time. And this time, you can see we just carried so much more speed compared to Q1. Taking that inside sausage curb uh, with the floor rather than the tire. Brendan Lee goes P1 slower than his first Q1 run. And that tends to happen a lot in PSG. And I don't really understand why. You can see we went 1.7 tons faster um, than our first Q1 sector 1. Uh, of course, part of that was that little mistake we made over the sausage curve as well. Lucas Blakely goes provisional P1. And so far, our lap has been tidy. Not 
not too crazy on the limit. Um, but we've carried good speed. We've braked late. Good exits. Uh, you can see there two tens up on Wilson going into the final sector and four tens up on our previous lap, which I think is a 118.0 or 118.1. So for now, it looks like we are going P1 into the final corner. All we have to do is keep it together, carry a little bit more speed compared to our used tire run. I can see we are so safe on the exit with so much space to still use, but I just want to take it safe and get it over with. And uh, you can see there, fastest man on track um, at the end of Q2 here. Uh, or the start of Q2, midway through Q2, whatever. Uh, we're not going out again. So what do you think about... Uh... Um, what I was going to say, um, it was the end of the Q2 session for us. I wanted to save another set of softs for Q3 because my plan now is we've got three new sets of softs and there's only time for two push laps. But what we're going to try and do is go instantly out on a new set of tires. And then, um, as you can see here, end of our first Q1 run, uh, Q3 run, sorry. Um, we're going to finish this one because this was a pretty decent banker lap. So now what we're going to do I will go is out instantly again. keep and, pushing. Um, then I still have two chances. Yeah. And as, as you can hear me say there, uh, I interrupted myself. Um, uh, now, basically, we're on a second set of tires. Um, so this is our second chance, but as you can see, if we finish this lap, we won't have enough time to um, go for our last one. So we didn't finish it, came in, and now we've got our third new set of tires. So we basically gave ourselves an extra chance by not going out in Q2 again. And it just helps a little bit, I think so. Of course, we had to rush a little bit on our inner out lap, so that might have compromised us a little bit into turn one. See, I braked way too early, I had to wait with the turn in and usually that's an indication that you haven't carried enough speed uh we're half 10 down now so compare that to our banker freddy rasmussen goes two tenths faster than us so we somehow have to find two and a half tens here on this lap into the second chicane you can see we are 300 up exiting so we have gained almost one tenth through the second chicane and we still need to find around 1.7 tenths if we want to battle for pole position here uh, in Q3, but it looks like at the moment it's not going to be enough. There's still a lot of time to find in Ascari. Um, I remember from our first banker run, um, but it's so hard, such a hard corner to nail. And you can see we've lost time compared to a banker. And you can see here, I wasn't happy with me um, messing up that corner because with that slide, we've probably lost um, not a tenth, but close to it. Um, because it's such a long exit now into the final corner gain a little bit of time oh. again but it isn't good enough and it's only p8 and that's just very disappointing after uh, having three attempts and you can see we were 1.6 tenths away from pole position but it was in there it just made so many mistakes um, there are some reasons for that of course I, I played the game for basically five or six hours straight which never really works to be honest for me um but yeah it was i had to practice of course um as much as possible ahead of this so yeah i think that was our downfall a little bit in this q3 session just my head getting tired now onto the race um forget everything that happened in that q3 session we were fast so we're gonna try and be fast in the race as well we're gonna be starting on the mediums and you can see a lot of people around us on the heart so we've opted for a different strategy here and it's going to be five red lights. And away we go for round seven of PSG. You can see we had a pretty terrible start. But I think my lights went out slightly later than the rest. And that tends to be an issue a lot on F1 games. Um, and you can see I hit Brendan so hard there. But somehow I didn't get damage. Um, don't ask me how. But that should have... Probably been damaged, not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, we, we take it though, we take it. Uh, we're definitely 100% my mistake. An easy mistake to make around Monza because the pack just bunches up in turn one and goes incredibly slowly. Uh, so we remain in P8 after just about escaping that front wing damage. And 
we need to try and get past Patrick Seepols as soon as possible. You can see that I got a friend request uh, through EA, which is incredibly annoying because I can't turn it off. Um, I hope they're gonna do something about that because I remember I had a few few times in quality as well. So some people were sending me friend requests and. Uh, it's gonna happen multiple times in this race. It's really annoying. Um, as I completely missed the apex of the last corner. And the car is very heavy now, of course, so it's gonna be very lazy um, on turning. And then once you get a snap of oversteer, it's gonna be. All on hards. What did you say? Oh, six all on hards. Um, as Patrick Sheeples tried to go for a move. What I want to say. If you get a snap of oversight, it's very hard to recover. Turning is very lazy, so um, that's just the issue with a heavy car. But now we're going to go for a move on Patrick Sipos. We've turned on the overtake button, and we're going to go down the inside into the second chicane. We're going to just break a little bit later. We take a bit of track limits. Um, and yeah, you could, you could argue that was an illegal overtake, but um, I think... It was just so tiny that it wasn't reported. Um, the only reason I went slightly more left than I should have was because I wanted to give Patrick a little bit more space. So um, we didn't get reported. Uh, I think no one saw it as well. So uh, maybe we got lucky. I have got no clue. Anyway, on to the start of lap five. We're going to go for a move here on Fabrizio Donoso. Uh, we go left, he goes right. And Patrick Sipos goes straight away for it as well. As Fabrizio, I think, dropped out of DRS. So... That make his life very hard uh, to defend on the main straight. Up to P6 we go. And we are behind Brendan Lee now. And we have to close the gap a little bit to get back into the DRS. Now, of course we made two moves now. Up to P6. Um, you could be thinking, that's not enough starting on the mediums. And that is true. But we are aiming for a different strategy here. Compared to Patrick Seepals. You can see he boxes. Okay. But we are not. We're going to continue for another five, six, seven laps. And that is. Drop comes out three tenths ahead of Seepals. Because we are aiming for the soft tire in the end. And that's going to be very, very tough, of course. Because mediums don't really tend to go until the end of lap seven. You can see people in the hearts are already boxing for mediums. But I just want to try this. Uh, we were, of course, starting P8. I wanted to take risk. Um, I had a lot worse of a start than expected on those mediums. Uh, I initially, I expected to gain a lot more than just two positions in the opening lap. And I think that's why um, we're going to be struggling in the next two laps. Because uh, ideally, we will be right behind Barry now in his DRS. He will be pulling us along because those mediums are absolutely dead. You can see Barry boxed. Um, we are still out, end of lap 17, uh, we're going to be boxing now to a brand new set of soft tires. And uh, Jake Benham doing the exact same as us, but a few seconds behind. Purple pit stop, brand new set of softs available. Uh, you could be thinking, uh, why does he have... Smart to box at the same lap. Said this before. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Um, you could be thinking, why does he have a new set of softs? That is because the lobby got restarted uh, after desync issues. So we're out on a brand new set of softs, which we wouldn't have had if the lobby was not restarted. But at the same time, we would have not gone for this strategy if we didn't have a new set of softs. Now, straight out uh, next to Fabrizio Denoso. But of course, we're going to have cold tires. Um, you can see that I, I turned on the off take button for a brief moment, but I knew there was no point because we're not going to have the grip. That we want. Longer. I just came out behind this wall train. Uh, as you can hear me say, I should have stayed out a lap longer. And the reason for that is, if I would have stayed out a lap longer, my tires would have made it. And also, I would have come out in clean air ahead of Wilson. And that just gives us a lap more breathing room with these soft tires. Because you need uh, the softs to stay fresh. They are much faster of course when they're fresh and you have to do less tire saving um and yeah you have less tire in the end less drop off so that was a non-ideal situation now um i'm gonna save my battery a little bit we're just gonna try and stay in this drs frame purely 
on the tire advantage and recharge her battery a little bit. Because you can see Fabrizio is still 5 tenths ahead. He's using his battery quite a lot. And I felt like there's no point in attacking just yet because they're going to be fighting each other using uh, their battery. And while they do that, we're just going to sit back and uh, recharge our battery. And then once they run out, we make the move and, and go for it. Um, so now, end of lap 19, we move on around half a lap later. You can see Fabrizio, just as I predicted, going for it and uh, using his battery to make a move on Patrick's people. So they're going to be going side by side into the chicane. Patrick runs a little bit wide and we are going for the switch back here. And of course, we're going to have better traction because we are on fresh softs compared to old hearts and reasonable new mediums. Now, Fabrizio here right to us is getting slipstream of Patrick and Patrick goes defensive. As soon as we catch up, we're going three wide. We managed to break a lot later. We've got so much more grip compared to Both everyone else. Kill me in the nose yeah, it's all great move, mate. And now we need to quickly get back in the DRS of Yoni Tormala and gain as much time as possible just purely on grip of these fresh soft tires. Freddy and job for three seconds. As you can hear my engineer say there, Freddy and Sebastian Job both a three second penalty, which means we might gain another two positions here in the end um, from penalties. Freddy leading the race, of course. And now we are trying to get back. Now we're trying to close this gap to Yoni purely with our tire advantage. Um, we don't have a lot of battery to play with. And that's because we push so hard on the inlaps of the medium stint. Um, that we don't have anything left, so that hurt us a little bit. Um, looking back at it, probably should have started hard, but I felt like I could gain a lot of track position with the mediums and then um, go on a fresh set of softs and pounce through the field again, but it didn't quite work out as Fabrizio and Patrick are still battling really, really hard, and now they have dropped both out of the DRS range, so that's good for us. They're still going side by side. Um, and we have caught up to Yoni a little bit uh, now, but he is still getting DRS as well. That makes it so much harder to overtake on this game. Um, if Yoni wouldn't have DRS, then, you know, um, we would have a straight line speed advantage. But that's what it is. Um, that's how it is. And now, Patrick Schiphol still got a hat. Oh, Fabrizio, after all that fighting. Um, Patrick still on those old hearts, of course. Uh, probably struggling a little bit for grip compared to Fabrizio, but Fabrizio just, just doesn't seem to be able to get past. Now, three tenths behind Johnny, and you can see he's using his battery, so he might have a lot more than us. Uh, I've got no clue what he is on. Um, but what I do know is that he boxed really early for mediums, so he should have worse tires, and we're just hoping that he's going to fall off a cliff. Now, two laps to go. Unfortunately, that did not happen, and our tires are falling off a cliff now. Uh, Fabrizio right behind us, and I kind of sensed that this was going to happen. Um, the softs just don't seem to be good on this game. Every track you go to, yeah. you've got an incredible amount of tire wear and just no, not much uh, more grip. Not gonna um, and, and just, this race just confirms it again that uh, there's almost no point in running a soft tire unless it's qualifying because they just die. Uh, we boxed uh, end of lap 17. We are eight laps in, uh, eight and a half by now, and they've completely fallen off a cliff and we're just desperately trying to hold on to it. The only reason Fabrizio has not overtaken us yet is because we've got, we had a 100% battery going into the final two laps basically so now going into the final corner we've got um 72 percent on the exit and that means we can absolutely use the maximum available here as our tires fall off a cliff on this last lap unfortunately um we couldn't battle yoni um we could have but i decided not to because it wasn't smart for this exact reason yoni goes a little bit wide into turn one we clip the inside curb you can see the yellow flags up ahead, and that's oh, Barry Borman nice. and Freddy Rasmussen out of the session. Championship leader Barry Borman has crashed out 
after battling for the lead. And now it's Lucas Blakely back into the lead again. Now we are trying to still defend there from Fabrizio De Nozo because every point counts in this oh, championship fight. So um, as you can hear me say, my rears are absolutely gone. We are closing in on punctured territory. Um, and this is the last DRS zone we're going to get. So luckily we got it from Yoni by just a tent. And luckily we have got enough battery to defend from Fabrizio because tire-wise we're absolutely done for and you can see that Fabrizio on the exit is on our gearbox and we can just pull away simply because we've got the battery and that uh, saves us from dropping an extra position into the final corner now uh, Fabrizio once again on the exit right on our gearbox uh, <laughs> I think he actually hit us on the exit there but um, unfortunately it's only P6 after that penalty Sebastian job cut we take it though, it was a, not a great race, not a great qualifying, not a great Q3. It was a great qualifying actually until Q3. Um, but yeah, it was just wrong strategy, um, bad Q3. And that combined um, made sure that we didn't get a great result. Now, unfortunately, um, PSGL has decided to end the season early. Uh, as you can see, there, these are the final standings after... Uh, only two races to go. There are game issues um, that allow them not to continue. Um, and also with F1 Esports coming up, they felt like it was better to end the season uh, instantly. So Lucas won the championship. We finished uh, P3 in the end um, after that Monza result. So um, unfortunately, we couldn't fight for the title uh, this season. I think even with the last two races, it was near impossible to... Um, and get the championship anyway. Um, but it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the PSGL season. We will be back after F1 Esports. WR is still going to be on, of course. Um, during F1 Esports, they have um, gone to a halt as well um, because of the same reasons. So uh, we will continue that during the F1 Esports season. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for more league racing content. And see you guys next time. Ciao.